When you're making a map, one of the big questions you have to ask yourself is how many categories should I choose when displaying information? This is a much more complicated question than it seems on the surface. Remember the goal of making a map is to do a very good job communicating spatial information. So the amount of categories you use can have a big impact on the effectiveness of your data. And so for example here we have a map of GDP per capita in 2005. We can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories of data here. And seven starts pushing some limits. Um, you can see that it's a little hard to distinguish between some of the colors uh, and is it doing a very good job effectively communicating information? Uh, I don't know. Looking at another example of a GDP map here is Africa and we have here five categories and in five categories it starts becoming a little bit easier not only to see the differences between each polygon um, colors um, but also even to remember some of the numbers themselves so you know that we have 4,000 and above all through here in North Africa and then we also have here in South Africa but <clears throat> then in Sub-Saharan Africa uh, in Central Africa you can see that the GDP is much lower. This five, number five, makes it a little bit easier to read. But even to make things even easier to read, um, here we have four categories including the no data category, but even to make things easier to read, it's not just by color, but also even the numbers themselves with high, medium, low, very low. This makes it even uh, easier because it gives words to these numbers. So we can say here, oh look, there's a high GDP here, a medium one here, and a very low one here. The colors are very easy to distinguish between each other. And also the, num the amount of categories there, there are in this map makes it <clears throat> less difficult to distinguish between the two, but you can even see here between the medium and high, these colors are very close to each other. It's very hard to distinguish them. Like for example, here's a medium and then here's a high. So when you're choosing colors, when you're choosing the amount of categories, you have to think about a few different limitations. One is going to be the eyes limitation. So what can you actually see? And the other is the minds limitation. Like, for example, here, we have actually, I would say, a pretty bad map because we have too many categories with uh, three, six, nine, ten categories. Um, the numbers themselves are hard to read, 38,872. So they're not in very easy to remember formats. There's ten of them, so it's even hard to see the color variations and to be able to say, oh, this color must go with this symbol. Um, so here we have, again, too many categories. So how do we address this issue whenever we're making maps? One thing that you need to keep in mind is, of course, the what's our, what is the eyes limitations? The eye can see a maximum of 12 different colors, but when it comes to shades of color, of the same color, you only see really about 7 to 8. So whenever you're making your maps, if you're going to have completely different colors, then you can, go, you can increase your number of categories a little bit more, but when you're in shades, um, 7 to 8 is going to be the maximum. And you can see from this last map here that having up to 10 shades makes it very difficult to see the differences in in colors so uh, to be able to relate it to the legend the next limitation you need to think about is the minds limitation the short-term working memory well how many pieces of information you can keep in your head at any given time and um, the average person can keep seven uh, pieces of information in their head um, but people with very good short-term memories might be able to keep up, uh, keep normally up to two more 
so up to nine, and then even people with without as good as short-term memories might only be able to keep up to five things. This is why you see things like phone numbers that mean seven uh, numbers long, because it's easy to, to work with. Um, so whenever we're choosing categories, um, you want to also think about the map reader. You don't want to have to, you don't want him or her to have to constantly go back to the legend to keep looking at what does that that category mean. And so keeping your numbers below seven would actually solve two different problems. It keeps the I limitation for the for the gradients um, variations, and it solves the problem of the mines limitation. Another thing that you need to keep in mind when choosing even your colors themselves is that uh, people who have color impaired, uh, color or, or, or are color blind, um, will not be able to see the differences between things like red and green. So you can see here with the normal eye, you have the full color spectrum of visible light, but then whenever you have the uh, red defective or green defective, they're not going to see these differences here. And so what you're going to want to do is to avoid pure greens and reds. And there's actually a sizable amount of population, especially the male population, that have uh, red, green, color blind. So this is something that you're going to want to keep in mind. Um, another thing that you want to keep in mind, even when choosing your colors, is that a lot of times things get converted to black and white. Um, so you want those colors actually to have, to be uh, photocopy safe, uh, to convert from either a color to a gray scale that has enough shade differences. Um, and of course you want to also avoid super uh, bright contrast because that can be hard on the eyes. Um, <clears throat> besides that, also whenever you're choosing your colors, you might want to choose um, things that meet some kind of color standard. So for example, here we have the USGS low, uh, land color codes. And so for water, for example, deep water, you expect it to be dark blue. Um, for things like forests, you expect them to be green. These are things that you want to keep in mind whenever you're choosing your colors. You want to choose things that make sense to people. So for example, if you're mapping out money, you might want to, something that has to do with money, you might want to use green because of the U.S. dollar is green. And so <clears throat> what's a quick way that you can you know, solve all these problems. Um, one thing that's very cool is this website called colorbrewer2.org and this is made by Cynthia Brewer and uh, from Penn State University and she's done a lot of analyses on how to do this color advices and so if we go and check out this uh, web page it's a really awesome page. Uh, you can go here and select how many number of classes they have up to 12 because remember there's the, the mines limit for uh, 12 but um, and there's even some even read you know you can read about that but it's probably best to keep between five to seven classes um, so if we go here for example we just choose five classes <clears throat> then you can choose the nature of your data you have different types sequential diverging or qualitative um, like this would be something like uh, going from for example on that Africa map from low medium high that would be diverging there's two different poles um, sequential would be going from like you know GDP map where you want to say you know zero dollars to one thousand dollars and so you want to show that through sequential and then there's qualitative which are going to be categorical data things like uh, the American South, the American West, for example. <clears throat> and so what's really cool about here is that you can choose the nature of your data set type. It's going to give you a color scheme. And so you can choose here multi-hue or single hue. And it gives you a little preview. This isn't actual information here. It's just giving you a preview of what it would look like in different scenarios with either mixed information like here in Texas or <clears throat> going from lower to higher. What's also cool about it is that after you choose um, this information, you have uh, options like colorblind safe, which is going to keep <clears throat> options away that are not safe for someone who's colorblind. So if we choose here, um, something like this would not be colorblind safe, but if I click on it, it's going to take those options completely away from here. Um, <clears throat> there's also things like print friendly safe, 
or even photocopy safe. And photocopy safe is going to be something that converts well to black and white. <clears throat> Once you choose your different uh, different color schemes, it's going to give you here the either hex codes, RGB codes, or CYNK codes. I usually like to use the RGB codes. <clears throat> and so these RGB codes are going to be the three number combination that you would type in to your program, like a GIS program, to create that color. So <clears throat> these are the color codes that you would, would write down or copy and save for your map. <clears throat> so this is a really cool website to check out. It's Color Brewer 2.0. It gives great color advice. Another uh, option that's kind of cool if you want to go into the more artistic side of things is going to this website from Adobe called Q, uh, Q, which they've actually updated. And you can see here now it's called Color. And what's really cool about this is that you see those RGB codes here. That's where you're typing those RGB codes from Color Brewer. You can get them here too. Um, but here you can experiment with swatches and you can move things around and it's going to give you colors that look good together um, and so <clears throat> this gives you kind of a, a little workspace to play around with colors um, it's going to be color.adobe.com um, another thing that's really cool about those is that you can explore um, color themes and so like, I can go here and find different kinds of color themes that are being used that go well together and so um, and then whenever I find something that's you know looks good, like for example this one, I can actually look at it and see the different colors. And so we can see how these colors look good together or so. And if I go to here and click edit, it's gonna give me the different RGB codes again. You see them across here, and so I can just save those RGB codes. And, the, and use them on in my mapping programs. So <clears throat> those are the two things that you need to keep in mind is, uh, or I guess three things, is the mind's eye, uh, sorry, the mind's limitation, the eye's limitation, and then even you want to try to keep things in mind like aesthetics, you want it to look good. Um, <clears throat> Those, those things is how you're going to decide how many categories you should have in a map. And so a good map should have between five and nine categories. I would say seven is a good amount of, cate a good amount of categories. I usually don't include the no data category when I'm deciding that. I just consider that more like a, an extra. And so in a way, you can do no data plus seven other categories. But normally five is probably going to be the most ideal to do. <clears throat>